But I want to ask you, so somebody's trying to move from the UK, US back to Ghana. How is your mindset supposed to be? What are you supposed to think of when you're coming back home to Ghana? As Africans, we've been programmed not to value what we have. And um, we don't even trust our own people. The first thing you hear is, um, you know, when, when I'm going to Ghana, our leaders are corrupt. The system does not work. You can't trust Ghanaians. Now, before you can come and go through the process, you should work on that. We should actually uh, repair that misunderstanding. If you're moving from England to America, there are a lot of these questions you won't ask. Sure. Not because they don't exist in America, but because you've been conditioned to see that as a very perfect system. But we all see the results. And so if you're coming, you must have a higher sense of mission. Not only for your comfort and not to come and help us. You are not coming to save us because somebody taught us that we have to be saved. Mm. So if you come with that disposition, uh, you'll find it difficult. Because then anything that we do which you, which you don't like, you give up on us. Dr. Abna, just, you know, before you continue, somebody is living in the UK. Yes. Has been sending money to their family member yes. in Ghana to build. Yes. They come home yes. and it hasn't been built. Yeah. What do you say to that? I'm a builder. We develop apartments. Building is beyond just sending money. Okay. You send money to the person, does he have the expertise? Even if he understands building, does he have the operational understanding? Can he manage the boys that he's working with? And so you sending money to your brother or your sister. It's a technical work. You know, you don't need to just send it to somebody who's just sitting somewhere doing nothing. Maybe you test them with 1,000 CDs, 10,000 CDs. You send them somewhere they are truthful. Then you can send them 100,000 CDs to do something for you. So many people go through this because they have not tested. Just because he's your family does not mean that he's honest. And just because he's dishonest, it's not because he's in Ghana. So that understanding that I tried them and they failed. It's because you didn't do much of the work yourself. You know, you didn't build a relationship. You didn't understand the expertise of the person. So I'll give an example. And there was somebody that was building. He had a contractor. Uh, the contractor said for 13 uh, meters, it's going to cost 35,000 Ghana. He sent the money. Mm. Eventually, he came back to Ghana and went to the ECG himself and asked, oh, how much is the electricity meters? And they said it was 15,000 Ghana. These are happening on a constant basis because people feel that, oh, oh, I brought it, so they have the money. How do we correct that? I think value systems are built in people. Okay. At what point did any institution build that in us? The mason that you're working with, he completed maybe SHS or JSS. He's been, you know, he was under some master's and apprenticeship. He was not taught a lot of these values. Now, don't forget that the family, before these other guys came, the colonization and all those, the family was in charge of educating us. Now, they push us through school. How much of a school is actually instilling these kind of values that be straightforward? That's how you succeed in life. It's not pushed down on us. Are they even bringing the, the religious institutions? Do you think that they're teaching us this? The nation as a whole does not have any formula to train people to live with principles and values. It's not that in their nature or is in the culture for our people to be dishonest. It's just because we've not been intentionally conditioned or taught that this is how you build anything. So the guy thinks that you are in America, you have money. You're in England, you have money. After all, that's what you portray. That when you come, you come with dollars. And you say that uh, they pay you 10000 a month. And he's here. So he's looking up to you. Don't forget. That's where money is. When he meets you and is not firm on his values, these are normal practices that they do. And it's not just at that level, all through, all through. Because anywhere that you go that people are principled, it's not because they were, that is their nature, they were taught, conditioned. Systems were put in place to train the people to follow a particular party. I don't think that we have done that, and that's why we continue to experience that. But the same person, if you expose them to different kind of information, where you say that if you're building something and you're straightforward with this person, you can have continuous work. And that's how you build your business, that's how you take care of your family. If he gets that understanding, he will come and show you the figures himself. And he will just charge what he has to charge, not to loop up uh, the invoice, you know. So, but it's a practice that they all go through. And once nobody tells them that this is wrong, and we are expecting them just to change by themselves, then that will be uh, what we experience. So people come and they maybe visit ministries or, um, you know, government entities and they want to do business with them or they've got some ideas. Back in their home, maybe in the Western world where they've lived for many years, things happen quite quickly and the systems 
are a bit slower here. Mm. I would say I always say that Ghana has its own system. Mm. But when are we going to be able to get a system where it's a bit quicker? Sometimes you go to the ministries, you give them a letter. They said, oh, we've received it. The next week you've gone, miss, they've lost the letter. Yeah. How do we get... Because those are the things that frustrate the diaspora who is coming back, who's used to a certain way of living. Systems are built by human beings. The, the reason we have the minds that we have is because we should be trained to build our own structures. Now, if you look at the inception of education, uh, developing the minds of the people to build structures to run the, the environment was not really part of it. It was just regurgitation. Or they just uh, read and, you know, tell me what is this, and you give me the answer, and we think that that's an education. Really, education is developing the minds of the people to think, to put systems of steps in place so that they can solve problems that they meet. And so when we say that Ghana does not have an intentional system that works, it is true, because we have not built that. We inherited a system that we thought was designed for a development, and it was not designed for a development. So if you look at our business laws, if you look at even our, our just the legal laws that we work with, any other law, even look at our hospitals, they should be built based on the understanding and the culture of the people. If you pick a seed, the, feed, the seed germinates. Yeah. Everything is in that seed, isn't it? But we are trying to superimpose something on us and expect to grow with it. It does not work. Now, the education to develop that system has also been truncated. And so when I go to school, 90% of what they teach me is probably an English culture. Mm -hmm. It's not really an education. Right. Because the way my grandfather was doing farming should be the one that they teach me in school. With maybe science, data, research on that. But here's the case they put my grandfather's practice somewhere. And then they give me a practice from England, in Ghana, in a Hamatan. So if I complete that school and I'm not able to do anything, why do you blame me? And so we should come to a point where we build our own. That's how the development will come. Trying to say that, okay, when we practice it like they do, they do it in this country, it means that we are, we are developing it alive. And that's why we have left a lot of our people behind. After all, I'm in Ghana, I go to school and I have to speak English. At what point did English have to become the standard language? You know, have you not come of age to say that our, our primary schools, our secondary schools, our universities should have some of our local languages? When we were in the university, I went to Kwame Kuma University, the professor who was teaching us English was using chi. Was it Rafa Monte? In two years, I was here. The Muhian is over who a subject in a one white verb, not a son, Rafa Maka, you can reason with it. And I think he was right. You can't develop a people in the absence of their own identity, their own culture. And, and, and so long as you continue to do that, you have not educated them. And so they cannot build that system that you're expecting. So you have something in your mind that this is a country that has, but at what point did we intentionally right. put these structures in place to say that this is how a nation is developed? Kabana, but do you think that even if Ghana was to say, okay, we're going to have a language in Ghana, mm -hmm. we would agree? The Ghanas will say this, uh, the Asantis yeah, will say yeah, this, yeah, the Ewes. Everybody should say something. But when they told us to sleep, we slept. We didn't agree with the president. Somebody must say that if we want to develop, these are the things that we must have in place. If you don't do that, then don't expect that development. So I think that we are trying to just play it safe because we're really not determined to develop as a people. You know, we want to practice the democracy, we want to practice the election, you know, sports, entertainment, and those are dominant. But innovation, industry, business, wet creation, those things we are not intentional. Because for you to be intentional about it, it means that you must develop a people who are who have confidence in themselves and they can innovate upon what they have and what they know. So you've written a book on perspective, how to develop the mindset to start and build your business. Let's dive into a little bit of that. This is a book that uh, I would have written to myself when I was growing up in Ghana. And this book I talk about, uh, you're going through engineering education, there's not much about business or finance or how to create anything. You're just given formless. And once you finish, the, actually they expect you to complete and come and look for a job. Mm -hmm. In a kind of economy, how many industries are being built and who is building them? And so I'm saying that if you go to school and you train thousands of our people to complete and look for a job, you're deceiving them. And so the kind of education that they have to give themselves so that they can pick Kelowili and, and sell it and build an industry out of it. Or go and, and start an okra farm and build an industry out of it. That is the, that's why I wrote uh, Perspective. And it has to start with mental shift and develop your confidence as an African. Mm, that's and, another uh, thing. Yes, we, there was not much history about us. Uh, the history that they were teaching us in school was starting from 1957, or slavery and colonization. Mm. I think if you start the history of the people from that weak point, you produce the people who are not confident. Right. 
in their heritage. And so I started to study history beyond that. 5,000, 10,000 year history. Not just on Ghana, but on the whole African race. And that repaired something in my mind. And beyond that, I started to study finance. How to pick any small idea and turn it into a business. And knowing that for you to create wealth is not salary. It's not salary at all. It's in business and it's investment. Entrepreneurship. That's it. I mean, 90% of the time, if you pick any group of people who have created wealth by themselves, that is where it lies. You know? And so when, when I complete school and I don't have a job, it's not a disadvantage. I can still create wealth. Because actually, actually if you depend on salary, you and wealth creation, uh, you're far. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but Kwabla, not everybody is built to be an entrepreneur. Some people are built to be nine to five. Like, for instance, Michael Jackson, he's a singer. He had backing vocalists. Yes. Some of them are not supposed to be at the front of the stage, but they're supposed to be managing the back, the chorus, the, all of that kind of stuff. Do you agree with that? Or do you think everybody's that, supposed to be an entrepreneur? That's what somebody told us. Once you eat, I've seen teachers who thought that they were just nine to five. And then after retirement, like they are now building school. It's a lie for you to tell somebody that not everybody can start a business. It's business that's meeting a need. It's the conditioning. And after all, if I complete school and nobody's employing me, and you, to, and you have told me that nobody can be an entrepreneur, so what do you expect me to do? Still wait for somebody to help me? No. Anybody at all can pick any idea and turn into something. Some will be very easy for them because maybe they have natu natural flair for it or their training. But some, they just have to do it out of necessity. I know a gentleman who is a teacher in the North says that I've taught for 15 years. When I started listening to you, something sparked in my mind. And now I have mobile money joint. He's a teacher. Okay. And now he's farming. And he's gone to DJ in a, in a radio station as well. And he says that my finances have changed. If you want to change your finances, let's be fair with our people. The salary that we pay cannot build anybody to be financially free. Mm -hmm. But there are so many opportunities in our country that people can add something to it, even if they have to keep their job. Yeah. So that idea. Okay, I understand that. But then, so if everybody's an entrepreneur, who's going to do the work? That should not be a problem. Because not everybody will be anyway. But everybody has that potency or potential to build something, especially those who want financial freedom. So I think that you can work. Mm. Uh, just like the Roman father is working, the work of God mm. for the country. I think that if you have salary, it's actually you're, doing, you're rendering a service to the nation. But hoping that your salary will make you financially free or worthy, I think that you, you know, you know it. So what would you say some of, are some of the opportunities? In Ghana, mm -hmm. everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. If you look at the land that we have, it's very easy to acquire land and do some bit of commercial farming. Is it a, a easy to acquire land? Farmland. Covenant. Farmland. Not Accra. Okay. Farmland. You go to Buno, you go to Volta, you want two acres, ten acres for cassava farm? Yes. You'll be able to. Okay. Anybody at all can also start to trade something. See, we try to measure our economy uh, with the standard of the West. They have industries, so they can tell you that not everybody can be an entrepreneur. We don't have it. So tell your people the opportunities are around you. If you have a degree, that's not mean you cannot be a cassava farm. Yesterday, somebody sent me a picture. He says that he's an assemblyman in uh, Santiago. He has a master's in something, something, and he started to do his own farm. So he, he produces plantain, cassava, okra, and he says that, boss, I don't even look at my salary again. Wow. Do you tell this person that you... You can't be an entrepreneur. These are the, um, the opportunities that we have. Our system is said that these are the ways that we can use to create wealth. And so you look at what you have and then what you can do with what you have. So how do we teach ourselves money? How do we streamline that? You must know how to get money. That's your income. You must know how to preserve money. And you must know how to multiply mm -hmm. that money based on the environment that you have. And that's why the one who is waiting for the government to increase his salary is waiting forever. But the same person can do something extra in the free hours that they have for extra income. He's able to manage that well. He'll be able to have some kind of leverage. So do you think people in the diaspora have a more advantage than the people in Ghana? I would say so. I think it matters what you know in the environment that you, you, are, you, are, you are. If you come with money, that is not enough. There are multinationals who have come here and, and packed back. They came with a lot of money. But the local knowledge was absent. I think the problem with the local person is that he's looking for a white savior. And so when you come with your pounds and your dollar, they think that you have an advantage. I think that the one with the proper information that works on the ground has better ad ad mm. advantage. Because knowing what to do with what you have is different from just bringing money. Mm. But Kabbalah, there's thousands and thousands of Ghanaians that are trying to get out of Ghana. And that's colonization. 
our minds have been colonized. And so the man has completed school, he has a wife, he's teaching in a secondary school, the government pays him something, the wife is also getting something, they have family, um, they, they are respected in the society, but they think that they have to leave that and become a security somewhere because they want to build a house. Some of them have, have even built houses and they will sell them and go to Canada. The problem is not money. The problem is that we've been defeated as a people, mentally, from top to bottom. And that's, why, that's how we see the way we see ourselves, you know. And so when the African uh, is not able to cross that line, whatever that he has, he will not have any respect for it. You've written in your book, just to add on to what you're saying, that we have not been trained to solve the problems of our environment because there is no sense of pride of our heritage when it has to do with building businesses. Yes. Can you delve into that? Because when you go to business school, what do they teach us? The, the case studies that they give us, they're foreign. They're foreign. So the school that you go to, when you finish, you don't see any, any example. For instance, if you pick a case study of uh, Emina who started to sell, let's say, cocoa, and if Emina was taught well, and, and if Emina was handling her money well, three years, five years, you see that Emina has some level of uh, financial success. If you go to school, this kind of examples you will never be taught. As a matter of fact, your teacher is telling you that <laughs> when you finish school, some general motors will employ you as an engineer. So the fundamentals of building, turning an idea, and, and turning it into a business or an industry, is not so much part of the kind of education that they have given us. Because somebody wants to take your wealth, your gold, your diamond, your oil. So why would they give you that kind of um, consciousness, if you want, that a lot of your you people who have been given this kind of education should go back and turn your raw materials into something beneficial. That is not it. So you, you see our professors, our, our PhD holders, they are all, what model do they have when I want to start a business and need capital? Mm. That's a very big issue, isn't right. it? But who will give you capital here? But there's a way you can start. Yeah. Because there are so many people who have started business without any business, writing anything and looking for any, I mean, writing any proposal or looking for any capital. They just started with what they had. And today is a big business. What they needed, or what we need, is a resolve, mm -hmm. is the resilience, is the toughness of mind, and the positivity to say that I can pick this and build this gradually, and being patient. And these ones, we think that uh, they have sent largely. You went to school in Ireland, mm. um, and you came back. Mm. What made you come back? Because some people, they go, they go and study, and they're like, nah, forget Ghana. This is where I want to be. This is where I'll be able to make money and go back home eventually. Sense of duty, sense of destiny, a uh, sense of purpose. Uh, I think, or I thought that the, 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 the desire, the talent that I had uh, could not be in that country. And uh, it was worth it to come and just fight. Mm -hmm. if, you don't, if you don't win, what do you lose? You make a lot of decisions based on what you know. My knowledge on our history as an African, my financial knowledge, my business sense, even my engineering education, the way I'm able to think differently. Mm. Those things, if you put them together, uh, there's no way I would choose that kind of life. You know, and it's, it's paid off. Overcoming challenges. Yes. We've mentioned some of the challenges. How do we overcome these challenges as, as entrepreneurs, as people that want to move to Ghana? The only way you get up is, uh, or you go up, is to solve problems. If you're looking for life without problems, then you must, have, you must as well give up. Any great person that you see, it's because they resolve to you know, stay in the game and win. How can you be a winner in a game that you're not part of? And so entrepreneurship, life, success, achievement in any industry, you must, you must have the resolve to solve problems. And so you're thinking about problems, challenges, difficulties that you meet. You're thinking the way you see those will decide whether you continue to fight or you give up. If you think that every trouble that's not worth it, or it's a demon somewhere that is chasing you, <laughs> or it's because Ghana's government is not working and the system does not work, then you give up at any little challenge. Those things can frustrate us maybe just one day, but the next day we look at the bigger picture, because it's not just about us, but it's about our people. Some people have come and they've said, you know, Denta, I, I want to come and help. Mm. You mentioned that, you said it shouldn't be come and help. No. We don't want that, so what do we want? If you take care of your mother, is it help? It's your duty. Yeah. It's your responsibility. I think that should be it. Okay. Don't come thinking that you are coming to civilize us. Some people say that, you know, exposure. What, is, what do you call exposure? We have had a lot of these guys who have gone to all schools, handling our institutions. Why are they not working? If that is an exposure that is needed, 
who are handling our economy? The institutions that we complain. Right. The institutions that have been run after independence, I can say that 90% of them, they didn't school in Ghana. So if you complain that these systems don't work, then what is the exposure? So I think that it's more than that. Okay. It's more than that. It's the people who understand the problem that they're dealing with and having the capacity to change them. But a lot of people in the diaspora also bring back skill. Yep. Right? Yes. So how do we integrate that skill back into Ghana? The skill you bring should transform, not the top. And I think that a lot of the people from the diaspora, they come, they look at the 1% at the top. And then the majority of our people are not. They sell something, who is it for? They are not, they are not looking at the Akosia are selling at the market, no. As a matter of fact, uh, the language, the packaging, the international standard, they are so much obsessed with that than transforming the, the, the fundamentals of the lives of our people. I think that if you come, you should look at the bigger picture, which is the transformation of our people. So if you're developing something and you're just looking at airport hills, uh, ANC more, no nothing will change. Okay, yes, so we still be very miserable people because then you're just, you know, very, very simple. Right. Top, no. I think that if you are changing us, it should be from the bottom. Okay. It should be from the bottom. The, the bottom 50, 40% must feel the, the expertise or the skills that you say you have brought. Yeah. So let's say you are bringing finance. Mm. Then just look at the guy who is packaging for every nines and sending to New York. No. Develop something that can go to a village. Yeah. Then we are transforming the country. Okay. But I think the diasporans are so much hooked on what the white people like mm. than what many of us can benefit from. Let's talk about real estate, because I know you're into real estate as well. And there's a lot of people coming into the real estate industry now. Um, do you think it's overcrowded? Are you are we concentrating just on the one percent that yes, you're yes, speaking that's about? Why it, yes, that's why it's <laughs> what that, are the one trends? Is, that one is full. Okay. You are building a, a two bedroom apartment that's three thousand dollars a month. That's not the market that we look at. Mm. We look at the uh, three thousand cities a month. Average finishing. Mm. It's always full. Yes, and we are not building with, with loans or with debt. No, we build with what we have. Mm. You know, so there's not much bedding. But if you are charging a dollar now, the dollar, the dollar is almost 16. Mm -hmm. How many people can afford that if you're charging $5,000 a month? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I think that it's still very loose, very open, but it depends on where you're you are paying attention to. So if you come, pay attention to the two-bedroom, the three-bedroom, and the one-bedroom right. for a national service person, for a market woman, for a young man who's trying to start something right. who, who can only pay 2,000 cities a month. And do you think we're concentrating too much on Accra? Is there opportunities outside? Everywhere there's opportunity. We have units in, uh, in Kumasi. Okay. Yes, always full. And so, uh, you see, a lot of the, the people you call diaspora, they are obsessed with the very nice, nice finishing, you know? The average Ghanaian does not have the financing. So if he focuses on that, he can't develop okay. anything. So I say that the real estate is very open. If you are if you're building for the bottom or for the 50% or maybe even 70%, because what you focus on is just 1% of the people. So let's talk about financial intelligence for expats. In financial intelligence, you discuss systems and financial freedom and how important it is for personal development for entrepreneurs in Ghana and what steps we should take to ensure that it's continuous journey. Wow, that's, that's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> intelligence is the application of knowledge okay. and skill. Okay. And once you're intelligent, it's something you get consistent results. You cannot be intelligent until you give yourself continuous education. And as a matter of a life, the, the best leverage is you constantly add a value to yourself, and that's going for information. And so you're desperate, you're coming here. The systems from where you come and where we are, they're different. If I go to the bank now, maybe 30%, 40% a year. That's not what you use. No. That's right. And even if you come with some money to come and do development and you're charging in city, if you repatriate that money, you can't get your money back. And so you have to understand that there are separate economic systems. Many of our people don't have credit card. So when you're producing something on the market, we are very much price sensitive. Mm -hmm. We buy on price more than on quality. Why? Because nobody's giving us free money. So if I'm buying a car, it's my money. If I'm building a house, it's my money. If I'm going to school, it's my money. If you're producing back for me, you can say it's something, something, but it's my money. Yeah. I'm not buying a credit card. If I start a business, there's no funding. So you have to know the, the difference between these structures so that when you come, you develop products or businesses that suit such a people with this kind of financial infrastructure, if you want. Mm -hmm. 
because without that primary understanding of different infrastructure that we have you will think that you're, you're pushing something on us and by the time you're done nobody wants it mm. so that's why you can have premium buildings for rent for two years three years and nobody goes there it's not because people don't want building or a place to stay but it's over price so produce something within our ability to purchase and that will put you somewhere oh, a friend of mine has a salon she's a diaspora she moved she opened the salon and then she realized that you know people were stealing the money and so she then decided to do cashless mm -hmm. so when you come is either you pay with credit card you pay with momo do you think that these are things that you cannot really tell somebody in the diaspora. You have to come and experience it and then adapt. Yeah. Because I feel like Ghana, you have to come and experience yes. to learn. Because there's no information that would tell you these things until you come and build. Yeah. Yes, you should come and experience it. Yes, as I'm here, and if, I'm, if I've never been, how can I assume and even experience somewhere that I've not been? And so I think you come and learn the process. Uh, you don't want the people to give the workers cash. Wow. I think <laughs> that you can give them some bit of training. It's not just the shouting. Mm -hmm. You must understand the people you have picked, how you pick them. Okay. You know, many times people will just use, oh, Ghana, we don't pay them well, so let's come, here's 200, I'll give you 500. You pity us. So anybody somewhere, you know, what did you use to pick those girls? What condition? What level of education? All those come to play so that at least you can see it. It does not mean that they will not do what they intend to do, right. but at least you can build a culture where when they come, they try to be honest. You know, so I think that once you have also picked them rightly, you give them continuous training. These are people who think that uh, if I put a sticker on my wall, God will make me rich. It does not link his prosperity to the work ethics that he has. You know, so now you have to tell them. This is somebody who is looking, uh, traveling, just to say that if I get a visa to America, I will do well. He goes to church and the pastor is collecting their passports and praying over, over them. The this is something that they're constantly thinking about. So what do you expect? Now you have to give them training and hope that uh, you can get less than thirty percent of them. Abna, listen, I've had friends that have trained. What kind of training? And trained. What kind of training? And trained. Yes, what kind of but training? Still, no, what kind of training? I'm talking about training, as in yeah, like having I, people come to right. speak to them. Yes. And going for seminars yes. and stuff like what that. What kind of training is key to me? What did you touch? What content? Because we also work with the same girls. And you've been okay. Uh, we are fine. I'm not saying they don't steal, but I'm saying that what they steal has not collapsed the business. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you get me? The same yeah. Ghanaians, we are here, they are working. Okay. So what kind of training are you giving them? What kind of confidence do you repose in them? Do you suspect all of them to be thieves? Who will live out to be good if you suspect him or her to be a thief already? So any little thing you think, that, hey, Ghana, we'll be here. Mm. You have to build their confidence. And those who are doing well, you encourage them. So there are techniques, there are practices, there are tactics that you have to use. And that will call for you to be so much obsessed with uh, the what are those that, tactics because uh, honestly what, uh -huh. Kamala, even when you are we are picking them uh, you will do mathematics yes mm. yeah yeah you said you finished SSS mm. uh, so 2000 plus 3000 is what okay your level of critical thinking can be proven and then if you are over religious uh, that's a red flag really yes yes that's a red flag yeah. <laughs> Uba, 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 you know you know you have to train you have to use your your head <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. the other thing is that if you have so many dependents on you, that is a bad thing. Mm. And if you have to pick 10 people, or maybe just one will be out of pity or out of... Right. You just want to, you know. So the other day I pick a girl, yeah, she has difficulty. I know that she's, she's not in that class, right. but I just have a hope that she will develop because of her condition. Right. So, um, but you build a culture where the leader knows that we trust them. And if they do something, you don't go there and shout. Even if you want to take them out, no problem. But don't make it. Small thing, you want to bring the police. No. No. So our approach is a bit different. And if they need help, you help. Okay. You know. And uh, there is funeral. Don't just say that you don't care. Now, why are you late? For instance, if they are late, you are shouting. In America, it's not like that. In America, they use train. We, hear, we use throttle. He dropped three times. We see simuntem. Okay, fine. But he, he got home nine. At what time can he get up? So we have to... Our expectation must be built on the infrastructure that we have as well. Kabra is a vicious circle. Listen, mm -hmm. there's this person that works yes. and the, the only diasporan that's in the office, it rained. Yes. The only diasporan that's, that was in the office mm. showed up when it was raining. Yes. The rest of them 
there are Ghana people, none of them showed up to work. Only the diaspora. They didn't even call to yes. say, say, oh, I'm going to be running late. I'm yes. not coming. Nothing. You have a standard. You have gone through that for how many years? We work through the snow. Yes, we, bec we, because we... You, got to, you have gone through that. We have not. So we are learning. At how long? Our you... contra how long? You have not pushed us through. Our contractors or our masons, for instance, those who have worked with some other companies, their thought patterns are different. For instance, we, have, we make bags and slippers. Okay. There's this guy who makes our bag. Anything you say, he doesn't get it. He can't write his name, he can't do anything. The other guy, same, he can't write his name. But he worked with some other company. So he came with some bit of training. It's mm -hmm. easier for him to listen. And so um, the diaspora will call because that is the culture that we're born in. If you sack him, he doesn't have to sleep on the street. Never forget that. Or oh, baby, what that? You think that he's not ambitious, but he's cushioned. I'm not making excuse for that, but I'm saying that understand that so that at least you don't kill your, yourself. And you don't break down. <laughs> Oh, definitely yes, now. because you're expecting so much, right. but it takes time for us to develop. Okay. So when you're coming, you shouldn't expect too much. I don't think that you should you should bring your standard here. Put your standard somewhere and develop us. Okay. With us. So that, so that's yes, you break down. And no, it's not just at that level. At every level. The same girl that you, you say that they are late and everything. When you have problems, look at the way they express their love. When you're in difficulty. Right. The same Ghanaian that you don't trust. When your car falls in the gutter. Everywhere they come, madam, you know, here. So, yes, they may not meet the other standard. But, but usually understand. they're doing it for because they know that, that they may not going to get some if money. You, if you don't give them anything, they don't have any problem. If you, when you went to your village, you saw your grandmother, your sisters, your aunties, also, they'll bring you food, not because they, they want to expect anything. That is in them. So, that thing is still in us in a very high level. Uh, our interpretation or our explanation may be different because you are wearing a particular glass. Okay. And you believe that, you know, we have to be pushed, we have to be polished, we have right. to be, you know, upgraded. Maybe. But I think that is a way that we can do that without breaking our people. Um, the role of the media and yes. seminars, yes. How, what, what role do you think they play in all this? Our media is just entertainment, sports, religion, you know. They, they, really, they really don't think we have a problem. Mm. They really don't think. They think that they have to sedate the people, amuse them, and that's, that's the entertainment. Mm. No, we, are, we have problems. And so we must use the media to reconscientize our people or to conscientize our people to wake up. Great work ethics you must develop. Values you must develop. Being able to, you know, build a people that you can depend on to get the work done. These are difficulties that we have. A people waiting for God to come and solve their problems. It's a problem. But the media does not really look at it that way. You know, every morning is political discussion. It's all, and we think that politics is the problem, that, the only problem that we have to solve. Who did that to us? Is the people who gave the media people training. Because mm. if you go to any media house, the attention is always on sensationalism. They're just looking for views. Without thinking that we are not America. America can amuse themselves. But the problems they have, our problems are different. Yeah. You have a generation where, which are going through the desert to Libya. Mm. You have a situation where your graduates are comfortable to accept any job anywhere than their country. And you still want to entertain your people as the other people know. And so I think... They are also victims of the same miseducation. Mm -hmm. But they will not accept that because they think that they know. But we look at our results, there's something more that we have to know. I feel that the media have a big role to play. America has basically sold themselves as the American dream, right? They have Superman. We have Koko Anansi, who's, you know, lying. They portray themselves as superheroes. They can go and conquer anywhere in the world and they'll win. We don't have that. We are more entertainment. When you listen to our media, it's more entertainment. It's more about alcohol. It, I get so frustrated when I watch Ghana TV. It's about alcohol. It's about sex, drugs. It's about different things that is not for a mind to grow. Those things doesn't help us. But we don't use our media for what you're talking about. No, we don't. We don't. But I think Americans have also pushed a lot of uh, entertainment. Jay-Z and all these other guys. Well, they There's a lot of entertainment. It's like they are patriotic. Mm. It's like you spoke about, we're not very patriotic as Ghanaians, as yes, Africans. It's conditioning. It's training. Okay. The media person, somebody trained him. And they are doing what they were trained with. And even the, the, the owners of these media houses, do they really have an agenda to make sure that people develop? They think that we are okay, actually. You know? And so it's a whole national psyche development, if you want, right. that we all must play a role. I will not even look at the main media stream. I think that we can use social media to do a lot. Yes, because they are interested in oh, cooking. They will put a camera on it. Anything that will develop the minds of the people, they say that there's no viewership. So I say, let's use WhatsApp. Let's use uh, Facebook. Let's use YouTube. 
So, for instance, the programs that you do, I think that you have people have picked a lot from your interviews than watching some of these other media houses. You know, so there are so many channels that. Oh, now, when you compare some of my mm -hmm. my views, yes, to entertainment views, yes, I'm nowhere. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I'm they, nowhere. They, Nobody wants to hear good news. Yes, yes. Human beings naturally would want to, you know, have fun, pleasure than responsibility. But if the few that have watched will do more, you know, far more better in life than the masses that are watching the other one. So I don't expect them to compete at the same level, but at least you're also cre creating uh, value in that line. The media that we have, you know, so I don't have a lot of confidence. Maybe they will change. Yeah. I do a lot of programs with my friend Odia Inkai. He's tough on that because he's gone through it. Right. You know, he's building businesses out of that and he wants that to be shared. And the reports that we have had from such interviews since 2020, they are staggering, they're amazing. Mm. So it's not because our people are lazy. If you give them the information, a lot of them are searching for information. Mm. If I open my, my, my hand is to you, the messages that come every minute, it's amazing. And so it's just That's that, true. yeah, yeah, yeah. People are looking for information to better their lives. So many, because where is it that they are teaching us finance? At what point did somebody teach you how to handle your money? At what point did anybody teach you how to structure and have goals for your life. You don't have that. And so once they come into contact with search messages, at least you open some door, it opens something, it triggers something, then they go to search and develop themselves more. And so I would say that they may be loud, but we may be making greater changes than them. Okay. And I mentioned when I was in America, what I did see was the American flag everywhere. Like every two blocks, I see the American flag. And I feel that those are little, little things that makes them patriotic, yeah. you know, just having that sense of pride. We don't have these type of things. Do you think that if we incorporate these things, it will help us yes. as well? Yes, it would. It would. But uh, we, uh, we, you see, we still have backlog of colonial thinking. I mean, our institutions are largely colonial. You know, we're still part of Commonwealth. <laughs> so we really don't, we are not fully in charge of who we think we should be. So, um, I mean, look at your, you say the British government has sanctioned something, something, giving money to support, I mean. And the money that is giving, the minister has it. Yeah. So why would you take it? So the people who represent you, they accept gifts that should not be accepted. Right. You should hold your dignity. Mm -hmm. But you know the chief, with all his content and everything, is accepting some boho from some foreigner. No. And so when you grow up to seeing that, where is your confidence? And so why should I put Ghana flag somewhere? When you're telling me that that boy should come and sing boho for me. If somebody comes from somewhere to teach finance, you see how people just put flag on it, isn't it? Yes, but if I teach it, then they will question you. Mm. We still have, it's a process for us, but I think we have a problem trying to project right. ourselves and project our own. I've been to Rwanda mm. and I've seen a vast change in Rwanda in terms of how the government thinks and how they work. Mm. I went there to do the Guber Awards and for me, working with their ministries, I've never seen a ministry that works, that you email and within 10, 15 minutes, everything is responded to. Do you see Ghana getting to that stage at some point? And how many years do you think we've got to go to I get there? The president Kigami was a vice for his years. Okay. And he's been a president over, I think, 20 years or so. Yeah. He's had experience. I think he has good heart. And I think he has brains as well. He has full commitment to the development of his people. Uh, I think what we have here, we have a long way to have that kind of leadership. And they, don't forget that they also went through a lot of tough time. You know, and that I think has also contributed to where they are now. The number of people, even the kind of politics that they practice. You, you know, the President Mama and uh, Vice President, they are going to fight, isn't it? This end of the year, every four years. You don't have money to build schools and hospitals, mm -hmm. but you have money to organize elections. So the attention is more on practicing the elections and the politics than the development. I think that their mind is on developing yeah. the people than practicing uh, the, the elections. And that's the difference between Ghana and maybe Rwanda or Nigeria and Rwanda. Nigeria and Ghana, they are in the same soup. <laughs> they are more interested. It's the same jollof rice. Yes, they say. They say. So maybe a shift will come. Okay. A shift will come. So there's a family from the UK. The mother's a nurse um, and the father's an engineer. Um, they've got four children and they're coming back to Ghana. How do you balance? What type of ideas? What kind of things can you do when coming back home to Ghana? A source of income is key. So you must establish source of income. So that when you come, you are not under pressure 
you know, to leave. I think that if you, let's say your family... Source of income in the U.S. or source of income? Establish when, when you're here. Here, okay. Whichever mechanism that you, you use, maybe before you even come. Okay. There's a way that you can... Some people have built houses that they rent or converted some of their houses to rent okay. or built some farm or a shop. They all, some people are making money over the internet. Whichever way, so that you have source of income. Income is key. Okay. So you shouldn't come if you haven't done that? No. You should, so what are you going to live on? Because once you run out of money, then you say that here yeah, is crazy. But really, it's not crazy. It's just that you're running, you run out of money. So, and I think that don't, when you come, just go at the level. Just be like us. Don't treat yourself so special, okay. you know. Because you know, um, maybe you take trotro or yes. What is wrong with that? We all take trotro. Okay. So you are not so special. That's the problem. You you get when you went there. You you got into the culture. Right. When you come here, don't separate yourself from the culture. Why do you think it's easy for us to adapt when we go? Mm -hmm elsewhere but mm. it's hard for us to adapt because to you embrace done. the white culture easily mm. and you think that that is the standard but i think if you came you don't have a lot of money but you have gone to easily gone to rent two thousand dollars <laughs> meanwhile you can go to achimoto and get two thousand cities a month you know you save so much so i think that just go to the minimum until your finances are raised and don't don't think that you're too special and you're different from us Especially those of you who were born here and now you have gone somewhere 10 years now you come, you don't even understand anything that you do. Uh, no. So just get the barest minimum and have control over the finances. Because okay. I think that what will move people back easily is when they, they live beyond uh, their, their means. And don't let anything frustrate you. Remember, I don't know if you are here. I don't know if you are at least nobody is knifing anybody here. So that is, that's a balance. So let's see the positives in what we have. Your children, let them get, get them to a place where they can even learn the language. You know, let them adapt to them because there's a lot of wealth in that. Don't just separate them say, uh, they speak British, so I don't want them to lose their, stand, uh, their accent. Some people have the accent. They, they still sleep in the guy under the bridge. So it's not the accent. It's the intelligence that they come with. You know, so have a plan and develop your children to embrace who they are. Let's go through some of these books that people can get. So we spoke about the perspective. Yes. Resilience. Can you talk a little bit about the resilience you, book? You, you have to be tough. You have to be tough. You have to be tough. You have to connect with the God within you. Mm. And that's your sense of mission, your sense of purpose. And that's why when you come, you will not give up because you have a reason. And Kruma could not give up because he had a sense of purpose. I want liberation for my people. And it didn't matter whether I go to prison or they want to kill me had a higher sense of purpose. So when you come and you are coming for comfort and, and fun, then you give up at, at, at the slightest opposition. You know, so resilience is connected to sense of purpose. Unlimited opportunity. Yes. Yes, in Ghana, everywhere. Everywhere. The problem is that you, the people are blind in the mind. Oh, right, you can't see <laughs> it. You can't see it. And the Chinese are seeing it, the Indians they, are seeing it. Ah, That's coming. why when you sack them, they don't want to go. They are here. And the people want to become liberated somewhere. Self-investment, how important is it to invest Without in you putting value on yourself, getting knowledge, and relying, you rely on your certificate, that's not it. You only create, or you can always create the life that you desire to be great when you invest in yourself. Financial intelligence. Yes. You must have that. It's a skill, it's precision, mm. it's knowledge, it's a mindset. Because when people say, like, I'm earning 3,000 Ghana CD, but they're unable to save for their, their rent the next year. Because it's de depending on that 3,000. He was in his village. He has 10 plots. Can do okro. The other day, somebody sent me a message. He said that I've done okro. Every week I have it, I get 5,000. Mm -hmm. He invested some money. Wow. Okro, okro. Some people, cassava. Aboboya, one bucket. It's 1,000 too. Mm. You are there teaching, saying that you want the government to make you rich. You lack intelligence. So can you talk about some of the success stories that have come up, some of these? The other day, a young man sent me a message from uh, Asan Gregoire. said that, boss, I'm in my village now. I'm doing cassava farming. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been able to save money. Before, I was using the money on girls, you know, and, and fully. <laughs> but because I got the sense that I have to handle my finances, now I've saved enough money on to buy a boboya and carry people's cassava in the village. Wow. He's not thinking of moving to the city. There are a lot of young men, educated ones, who, somebody even, uh, uh, okay, our, our last seminar, Accra, uh, a police officer came, says that when I started listening to you, I started to take charge of my finances. Now I don't depend on my salary. I've invested money in few things. But before, I would just cut anything for money. Now I fight them. It's because of the information. I tell you that in terms of information, we are minority. Mm. The critical information that develops people to become personalities is not on the street. 
And that is what we have to push. Financial freedom. Financial freedom. If you can't live without salary, if you can't take care of yourself without somebody taking care of your money, mm. you're not free. It does not matter how much income you have. It's how much you can survive without that income. Mm. And so the first 10 years of you working, instead of you to blow the cash, invest the cash in things that will produce money. The whole agenda is push the money in entities that will work more than you. Right. And then when you get there, you can say that I don't want to do this work again. African advantage. Yes, African the advantage. The African advantage is in you. It's in business. It's so easy for you to start anything, sell anything here and create wealth. That is what the foreigners are seeing that many of us don't see. Mm. Because they have told us that Africa is, what, is poor, which is not true. Somebody has to tell you, you know, there's a, this philosophy that if you continue to push a lie on them, they will believe that it is true. Mm -hmm. And that is what we have, they have done to us. So we see opportunities everywhere. And yet we still see us as disadvantaged because of what they have pushed on us. And then streamline how to teach yourself money. I had to learn it myself. So you go through a lot of mistakes. Right. You owe, you can't pay. Your business will go down because you employ too much that you didn't have to. You go for loans that you didn't, you didn't even look at the interest rate. Right. All those show that you didn't have any education or money. If you had it, uh, you will know that almost all the time you have so much than what you need. So somebody else mentioned, somebody that owns maybe is making 3,000 Ghana CD mm. and thinks that they have to divulge that 3,000 Ghana. Can they actually save yes. 500 or something somewhere to build? Freedom is not free. You must have that sense of responsibility that my condition will change if I take charge. So I'm not waiting for God to change my finances. I'm not waiting for the government to change my finances. I'm not waiting for Visa to change my finances. So even if it's 20 cities that I can save, there is this guy who works with us. The money before, what we pay him was using it to build. I told him that, no, you don't do that. You come from a place that you have access to a lot of land, cocoa farm and all those. So he went and discussed it with his uncle. He stopped building okay. and put the money in the cocoa farm. The other day he told me that he has bought another one. And now they are planting maize and planting under it. He's put his building on hold. And I told him that if you're able to do that, and let's say you get even 20 bucks of uh, cocoa or 100 bucks, this one will take care of you for the next 10, 20, 15 years. And then you can start to build. Because when you finish building, what does it give you? So your first 10,000, 20,000, 200,000 should not go to buy a nice car or a nice building. It should go and bring another money. And this one, our people don't get it. So he starts to work, he wants to have a very fantastic wedding. We are here about to a civil hundred thousand or a quiet wedding. We are in a Why? Because you need money to manage the family. And so the sense would, would be that when you start to work, save money and make sure that you don't keep the money in the bank. You invest the money in something that you have control and you understand. If you don't have control and you don't understand it, they will screw you. Financial freedom is not really just becoming wealthy per se, right. but making sure that at every stage of your life, you have enough to live and to help others. So your final thoughts on a diaspora that's trying to move back and set up a business in Ghana, what would be some of your advice that you would give? Think of your future. In your retirement, do you really think that you have invested money in that place that will take care of you without you going to work? It's far easier to do that in Ghana. All the pain and the struggle and the disappointments that you go through in Ghana, if you withstand them and overcome them, the future looks brighter, far more brighter than saying that I've given up on them because they have chopped my money. It's not only you that they chop your money, they chop all of us our money, but we still stay in it and overcome that. If you're here and you're able to fold, hold it for two, three, five years, you start to understand the system and you start to know where to step. So don't just pack because they, they have chopped your money or you are disappointed or you have gone back to nothing. Stay in it. If you don't qualify the class, you will never be promoted. What about the Ghanaian that's trying to go outside for greener pastures? I would say travel to sea, take a holiday, but don't abandon your job or your business here. Think that when you go, you'll be rich. Don't sell your house. Because when you go, it's packaging, it's Hollywood movie. A lot of us will struggle when you go there. Right. You go to start from zero with all your certificate on your education. And I don't even understand why people don't read the minimum income. For instance, in England, the average monthly income is what? Maybe 2,000. The whole year is how much? 24,000. If you eat from me, how much do you have? So let's say the person says, that, no, I'm paid 5,000. Okay, the whole year is what? 60,000 pounds. Mm. Take your tax and everything from me. How much can you save? But go to a lot of the wholesalers here and ask them. So if it's about money, it's intelligence. It's not in using working eight hours. But because you know, our people have accepted to be born servants. And so we don't see the wealth. These guys come here, they come with nothing. 
before you see it. So anybody who stays and not give up, give yourself 10 years and see if you not become successful. My mates that are here and my mates that travel, those who are here are far more ahead with better quality life, not just money, mm. than the others who stayed somewhere. Mm. I feel that I've seen more millionaires on the continent yes. than than outside yeah. for real. That's so it, yeah. I'm passionate about the continent. I feel that we should all come back but what um, Kwabena has taught us is that we are all entrepreneurs. Um, you can set up a business and make it in Ghana.